Hello, I've played a lot of old school RuneScape over the years, probably too much. And now, as an excuse to play even more RuneScape, I'm finally exploring what our beloved pixel game has turned into, RuneScape 3. Hello, hello, I hope everybody's doing great. Welcome to episode 10, I believe. Crazy that I have made it this far and I'm still really enjoying RuneScape 3. I really did not think that I would enjoy it up to this point as much as I have been. So really exciting things. But just to jump into what we are doing today, the first thing that I want to do is get Troll Stronghold done. And then I have a couple of other things planned, but you all will figure that out later. So let's go ahead and get Troll Stronghold started. Yo, know, I totally forget how to safe spot this. I think I open and I run over here, I think. Because then I think, I don't think he can enter. Okay. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This I am not. Oh, because I'm talking too long. I'm an idiot. And yeah, this dad hits just as hard as my dad did. Well, I'm glad I remembered how to safe spot this because yeah, he hits like a he hits like a tank. But we'll be back after we're done with this. Hey, and because of a failed pickpocket, I got 48 necromancy. And I got a new combat ability, blue. I will add that to the ability bar and see what it does if I don't kill this dude. Or if I don't pickpocket this dude. Or something. I don't fucking know what I'm saying half the time. Alright, and that is Troll Stronghold completed. Got two 10,000 XP lamps. So with that, I am going to use one on range and see what that gets me up to. 36... And then I'm trying to think if there's any other skills that I want to use that on or if I just want to throw it all under range. I think I'm going to throw the other one onto range as well, just to get that close enough to my other attack skills. And I believe it for Temple of Ikov, which is one of the quests that I want to do here soon, I need 40 range. So perfect, that works. So I decided since the weeklies are resetting tomorrow that I should come over to Anachronia and finally do Irby Werby. Haven't done this weekly activity yet, but I really want to progress and get an herb bag. So when I'm training Slayer and combat, I can actually pick up a lot of the herbs that I get. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. And that is 30 herb lore. And this weekly isn't that bad. Just finished up my first herby werby. Wasn't too bad of a D&D activity. Wasn't the most boring, wasn't the most exciting, but got the 100 points. So now I will just need to remember to do it tomorrow. And as long as I don't get any penalties or anything, I will be able to grab the herb bag. And now for the next thing I want to do, I think I'm going to go ahead and get that last range level so then I can go ahead and do the Temple of Ikov. And that is Temple of Ikov completed. That quest was a lot easier than I remember. I feel like, again, it's because I've done it at such a lower level in OSRS that this was so easy to do. But that is a bunch of range and fletching XP 31 fletching, I went up 8 levels, and then 2 range levels, so I'm at 42 now, and that pushed me up to 1100 total level. So I think the next item that I want to do is get my fire making up so I can start accessing Tears of Guthics. So I'm going to go on the wiki and do some calculations of how many logs I need to do to get up to... I think it's 49 fire making for Tears of Guthics. Um, but if I don't do that, I might go ahead and start working towards getting access to fairy rings. And my first step of that would be to do Lost City, which I think I have the requirements for. Let's figure out Lost City. Yep, so I have the crafting and woodcutting level requirement. 
depending on how much time the grind for Tears of Guthix takes, because yeah, that's 49 fire making. Um, depending on how long that takes, I might just go ahead and do Lost City, and then I actually think I can do Fairy Tale Part 1 as well. Yeah, so I just need to complete Lost City to be able to do Fairy Tale. So first, I'll see how long it will take me to get up to 49 fire making. If it's going to take too long, I'm just going to go ahead and do Lost City. Don't worry, I'm not completely abandoning the thought process I just had about getting 49 fire making. But I do have some bonus XP from capping the Clan Citadel on smithing. So I wanted to go ahead and get the ore I need to get up to 50 smithing. So then once I get all my combats up to 50, I can just go ahead and make rune armor. So that is what we are doing before we are pushing for 49 fire making. And based on my calculations, which I hope are right, um, it will take 700 willow logs to get up to that level 49 fire making. So I will see you at 50 smithing. Okay, I just got a mimic kill token. And I will be able to kill one giant mimic. So I'm going to look on the wiki and see stats before I use that. But as long as I can fight it, I'm going to go and use that. Also, I wonder what the drop rate is on that while scaling i feel like it has to be pretty rare but i will probably also see that on the wiki when i look it up all right just completed a easy clue so let's see what i get a u combo i will take that and i know since it's worth a lot that will be helpful for invention later down the road and Zamorak arrows. Nice. Well, back to the woodcutting grind. All right, so finally finished up getting the willows that I needed for my fire making levels, needed for tiers of Guthics. Ended up getting up to 50 woodcutting. Only have about 675 willows, but that should be enough since I did a daily challenge for fire making and have gotten a couple levels from what I was at originally when I started chopping willows. So yeah, I'm gonna be here in the worker district burning all these logs at the fire pit and I will be back when I'm done with this stack. 39 fire making. Almost forgot to do my daily challenges before they reset, but just went and did them and with it I got 40 fire making, 42 slayer and 15 dungeoneering. And now time to go back and sit at the fire pit. 41 fire making, 42 fire making, 43 fire making. So one thing I just finally now realized because I'm still so used to OSRS and there not being a bunch of quality of life things, whether they're intended or not, I've been walking to that fire pit from the bank right here. I could have just been using this the whole time. And then it puts me right next to the bank and right next to the fireplace. So thankfully I haven't spent too much time doing that, but still figuring that out hurts just a little bit, just a little bit. And that is 44 fire making, 45 fire making and a reward from the fire spirit, some charms and some fire runes, 46 fire making, 47 fire making, 48 fire making, and that is 49 fire making and now I can make bullseye lanterns and I can now actually go and do the tiers of gothics. Just got 51 divination and some diviners footwear so that is three pieces of the set. Um, now I just need to go blow some glass, do the lenses for my bullseye lanterns and finally do tiers of gothics real quick. I probably shouldn't say real quick because a lot of this episode is just me getting the requirements for tears of gothics which in itself is like a really short quest um but i like highlighting kind of all the progress and like kind of some of the big levels for you all i feel like that is kind of a purpose and why i like to watch other like progression and ironman series whether it's rs3 or osrs um but obviously if you guys would prefer that i show less of you know the 50s the 40s like every five or ten levels um and would rather me rather me just show you you know quest completions 
or of the actual quest itself, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Obviously, I am not a longtime YouTuber, so I'm still kind of working out what is enjoyable to watch and what's entertaining for you all. I'm kind of basing it off of what I like to watch and the creators I enjoy watching. So please leave a comment if you know you want to see something different or would rather me kind of format it in a different way. And finally, Tears of Gothics is completed. And now I'm going to go and do Lost City. And that's level 60 farming. I don't know what that does. What can I do at level 60? Plant you trees. Yeah, nothing exciting. I just realized that those are greater demons back there. They're looking kind. They're looking slim compared to old school. They've really been hitting the gym dieting, but they still look pretty damn ugly. I'm not going to lie. And that is Lost City completed. Don't really care about those. Just doing this so I can do fairy tales part one so I can use fairy rings, which I don't even know if they're that useful in RuneScape 3, but I'm still going to go for them just because, I mean, they'll be somewhat useful. I can guarantee there will be situations where I want to use them. The other thing that I wanted to say is that it's beautiful here. I love the graphical update to this area. Like, it just feels so much more, like, lively and colorful. There's a cow and a wheel. Gonna ignore that. Not gonna call PETA. But, yeah, I mean, it's just a really cool area in RuneScape 3. I've noticed I, I really do like a lot of the graphical updates that they have done to areas. At least some of the areas that I've explored. They've just done a really good job with it. Everything looks really good to me. But... On that note, time to get started with Fairy Tale Part 1. I'm glad to see that they finally gave the Fairy Queen a little house. Other than just throwing her chair here. Alright, back with the skull from Draenor Manor. Here is the moment of truth. There is specifically two items that I don't want to get. The first one being Mosquito... Proboscis, which is a reward from Taiwan One Eye Cleanup. And then the second one is a lot more simple. It's just the Nature Talisman. So, with that being said, I'm going to talk to him, give him the skull, and see what we get. All right. Uh, of course. Of course, I get one of the two items I didn't want to get. Ah, uh, that sucks. But. On the other ones, some jangle berries, that's not bad, and then a potato cactus, which I feel like I might have one, but if not, I'm going to have to check what drops is, because I know those are like 85 farming, maybe even higher. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do now is make sure I have jangle berries and check about the potato cactus, and then... I'm going to have to go and do jungle potion, I guess. So we will be back. So after checking the wiki, I found that really the only reasonable way to be able to get the potato cactus will be to go and kill cow fight workers. They're 58 combat level, so still pretty close to me. They drop them on an uncommon rarity. I have no clue what that means on the RS3 wiki. I'm so spoiled with the OSRS wiki to where it has the exact drop rates. But that is the most reasonable way I can see on the list to get those. Everything else is extremely high level or it's from Menify gift offerings, which I don't have any and I'm not exactly sure how to get those. So yeah, it could either go really good and I could get really lucky or it could go really bad. And then, obviously, the Mosquito Probusis just sucks. But with the research out of the way, I'm going to go now and get ready to go kill cow fight workers until I get the potato cactus drop. God damn it, I forgot I need a rope. Ugh, this is awful. As you can see, I have a potato cactus and I didn't have to kill anything for it because I'm an idiot and... For no reason, I scrolled down on the wiki page just a little bit and it told me that there was spawns in the cow fight hive on the ground and it gave me a map to where they were located. 
So that is the first item out of the way. And now just to go over to the jungle, do jungle potion and do the cleanup mini game. And that is jungle potion completed. And now time to do the mini game. Yay. Yeah, same here, dude. Oh, this is awful. I just have to wait for mosquitoes to spawn. Oh my god, I, ma I manifested it. Sometimes I don't believe in manifesting things, but that was too good to be true. I was just about to complain and whine. So that is awesome. Now the next thing to get is jungle berries, which I feel like are near Varrock. I could be wrong, but I also could be right. So I'll be back with jungle berries regardless. So I was wrong. There is only one spot where jungle berries spawn, and it's on this little island west of you know so now that we have those and i brought a couple i can finally go ahead and finish up this part of a quest go kill the tangle foot and be done with fairy tale part one all right and that is a fairy tale part one completed let's see if i get a level got a magic level so that's sweet so now I think I just need to go back to Draenor and talk to the Master Farmer to start Fairy Tale Part 2. So this is awkward. I forgot about the 57 herb lore requirement for Part 2, but I am very sure that I can get far enough in the quest to unlock Fairy Ring still without that requirement. If not, I just wasted a lot of my time just to be disappointed, but we'll find out. <laughs> I can't even start the quest without the herb lore level. Oh, I should have saw this coming. I should have looked. I knew this. I don't know what in my head made me forget about that requirement. And I know it's in old school. I don't even have to check. I remember it. Oh, that hurts. All right, to ease my pain, I went ahead and used my Mimic Kill token, so that's what I'm doing right now. I have no clue about this, but I'm figuring it out. I mean, the mechanics seem pretty straight. It doesn't seem too difficult, but I will be back after I kill this and see what we get. All right, Giant Mimic killed, and let's see what we get. Slayer VIP ticket. I kind of forget what those do, but I was hoping for something else. I don't know what the actual drop table is, but I was hoping for something more exciting. So I just got two codex pages. I have no clue what they do, but I am just on my way to Irby Worby to finish up this week's weekly really quick so then i can get the herb bag because i will have 200 points there we go we have the herb bag don't know how useful it'll be honestly because i know herb lore at a low level iron man and rs3 it's a lot of quest rewards being thrown into herb lore and just dnds weeklies things like that but this is an item i wanted to have just in case I'm killing any monsters that drop a lot of herbs, I can always just have a spot for them so I don't have to pick and choose what herbs I pick up. And now that I have the herb bag, I think the next thing I might go for is the gem bag, which requires 2000 Dungeoneering tokens. I feel like that won't take too long. I'm going to go ahead and do kind of like a test run of Dungeoneering to see how many tickets or tickets tokens I get to see if that will be viable to do without it taking too long. Sadly, the last probably 25% of this video's footage got corrupted. So to give a brief overview, basically went to Dungeoneering, had some clips from Dungeoneering at the end of it, only got like 20 tokens or less than 20 after two floors. So with that, that is not a priority right now to get the gem bag. I will probably just work on that over time and get that when I get it. But with that out of the way, this is where we are going to end the video off. Anyways, I really appreciate all the support. Remember, if you like the content, please like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, I'm still trying to figure out 
what works best in terms of entertainment value for you all, but also enjoyment for me. So if you have any tips or things that you would rather see me do when I'm editing these videos or what I showcase and what I don't, feel free to leave a comment. It again helps me grow as a content creator and also hopefully makes the videos more entertaining to you all. But with that, I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you next time.